Episode 2 starts off with a jump forward 10 years where Amicio has his completed harem and he visits the starting village again. He reminisces about what happened in the first episode. While he's doing that, he notices a kid with dark hair planting stuff in a field. The cat lady in the harem points out it's the same color as Michio's. Michio looks at his stats where we find out the kid is 9 and his name is Mio. We see a flashback of Michio with Mio's mom confirming that it's his kid. Michio asks Mio about his parents. Mio says that his mom is fine, but his father passed away when he was born. Michio pulls out a scimitar from his inventory and gives it to Mio and tells him to give it to his mother. If she agrees, just take it and use it to protect his mother. So then we go back to current time with Michio counting his money and he realizes he needs another 70,000 nar to buy Roxanne. He goes back to what the slave trader says for ways to make money, venturing into the labyrinth or bounty hunting. But he doesn't recommend going for bounties because of bandits. Bounty hunters are people they must eliminate, and that if you earn too much, you might become a target yourself. Before he heads out, he says that he needs to hide his uh, sword Durando because just holding it is enough to make him a target, and he doesn't want it getting stolen. And we find out the reason it's so OP is because he put 63 bonus points into it. He puts it into his inventory and heads uh, to the market to find another weapon. He heads into a weaponsmith with help from the system. He's able to notice uh, a weapon that has an empty skill slot, which the merchant is not able to see. And Michio also buys some armor. He ventures into the western forest where he notices people... uh, walking out of a teleportation gate. He heads into level 1 of the labyrinth and and he goes over his newly acquired skills for a bit. He notices a skill called Dungeon Walk. As he says that, a gate opens up and he walks through. He then tries to use uh, the same skill to go outside, but he's unable to enter the gate. He then tries to go back to the passage, but is unable to do that as well. He runs into his first enemy, which is a walking tree with arms called a needlewood. Uh, He kills it in one hit, and picks up a branch as the loot. On the next Needlewood, he tries his hero skill called Overwhelming. It either slows down the enemy or speeds him up, Uh, we don't know which. He realizes that when his MP is low, he will start to feel depressed, but he can recover immediately because Durandal absorbs MP. He turns in his loot, and using his discount skill, he gets 273 Nar. On the next day, when he goes out to uh, the labyrinth, he uses his warp skill to travel back into the dungeon instead of, you know, having to walk, and he gets depressed once he does it. He hunts some more monsters and lies against a wall, and it opens up to a secret room, but it turns out to be a monster's den. He's knocked up against the wall and says that he can't let them attack from behind him, but like he was already against a wall so he didn't need a move because they couldn't attack behind him. Anyway, he runs into a corner so that he doesn't have to worry about his back. He finishes the monster den, uh, you know, kind of collecting all that stuff, and as he's walking back into town, he notices a group of people standing around a tree, and he goes to see what happened. I Before, I find it kind of odd he didn't just use the warp skill. Like, I mean, he went there, so why can't he go back? But the townspeople say that it's a bandit's body and it's just, you know, laying against a tree. Michio asks how they know it's a bandit's body and they say that it's because his left hand is cut off. Intelligence cards won't appear immediately after death, so they took his hand. He then starts to, you know, go through that if he just uses the labyrinth, it's gonna take forever for him to do anything and that if he wants to make serious money, he needs needs to start bounty hunting. Some of my personal thoughts, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's obviously, you know, slower because they have to build up to buy Roxanne. Uh, I don't imagine they're gonna drag it out for too much longer. I would imagine this bandit bounty hunting thing is gonna take, you know, two to three episodes. 
and then he'll buy Roxanne and we'll see you know what happens there where that goes um, but yeah I'm looking forward to next week we'll see how it goes um, but that's about it so yeah